you know, Mike's got to be so proud of me that I've learned how to do these things. And um, I email the, the email goes out to everybody that's registered, Pat. So if you are registered, you should have gotten that email. If you are not registered, um, I'm going to write your name down here. Uh, now, the because yeah, the emails come through Zoom, so you should have it. But, uh, Pat, I will have a look for you and see. But you, you should get the email anyway, because I don't, I don't pick and choose if somebody came or didn't come. There's way too many people registered for me to be able to do that, so you should have it. Um, but I'll double check. Um, so uh, I, what I need you guys to do is um, if you could send me an email asking me for the recordings because I don't, I'm not always going to remember uh, on here. But you guys, if you are registered, you should be getting those emails. So um, you have to, there you go. Somebody's helping me out that the emails are coming from learning services at royalpage.ca. Excellent. And we send them from Sphere. You're right. And I'm the one that sends them out. You think I would know how I'm sending them out. I'm a lunatic. What can I tell you? All right, everybody. Here we are, 1130. We're going to get started right away. Welcome once again. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to uh, join us. Can you believe that we are in week four already? Hey, Mike, um, can you believe that we are here in week four of our training circuit? As always, we're going to keep this to 30 minutes. So I am going to ask you to keep your questions to the topic at hand. I know there's lots of questions and it's easy for us to go off on a tangent, but if we can keep them to the topic at hand. Also, please ensure that your chat is set to all panelists and attendees so that we don't miss any questions and we can get as many of them answered as possible. Um, because we don't want to miss out on anything. But before we get started on our week four machine, let's go ahead and recap last week first. Last week was a big week for us. Uh, we learned the CRM portion of the RLP Sphere app. And with that, we learned how to add a contact, how to filter our contacts, how to add hashtags, and how to create search alerts. So a whole lot of stuff we learned to do in our hands with our, our mobile app. And then in the listing tab, we learned how easy it is to create a listings list, boost the property, that's that Facebook paid advertising, and we learned how to post to social media. We also learned how to email and text our lists, our contacts, hashtags. So we're really learning that our RLP Sphere platform is all jammed into that mobile app. It's kind of like that, uh, if you ever saw uh, Aladdin, where they talked about the genie, right? Great big power in a teeny tiny little living space. That's kind of what our, our mobile app is. Uh, and then, of course, we learned how to schedule an email that we can send either later today or next Tuesday if we want. And I gave you a sneak, sneak peek into the lead engine. And what else did I do last week, ladies and gentlemen? I gave you some homework. That's right, I did. So did anybody do it? Uh, anybody want to share some tips of, of what you were able to accomplish? I sort of nudged you to make a couple of emails, uh, create some lists, scheduling emails. Anybody want to share in chat? Were you able to use the app at all last week? And what, what is your takeaways from the app? Anybody want to share? Uh, it shows, ah, David, that's interesting. So that might be something that you need to reach out to uh, support and make sure what's happening there. So double check what your feed is and why you're, because you really shouldn't be seeing that. You should be seeing it uh, only in the area that you looked for. So that might be a little bit of a, a bug that you've got there. Anybody else? Ah, see, I don't have that. Um, well, that's no fun that you're not getting the proper feeds for your area. So if, if you're all getting that, I'm, I'm going to guess that there is a uh, problem. So it seems to be universal there. I, I've not experienced that with mine. So I'm sorry that that happened because that kind of puts a little crink in our giddy up, right? So, uh, all right, good. So ah, Donna used it to send herself a task. Fantastic. Excellent. Good. 
All right. Well, I'm sorry there's a bug there, and hopefully they're going to get that worked out pretty soon. So I'm not sure if the bug is actually with the app or if the bug is with the um, the listings feed. So that's great. So there you go. Shirley's giving you some tips there. There's a setting that can be adjusted if you reach out. Fantastic. Ah, so you updated your search for clients. Excellent. Send to text and link to property. All right. Huh? Uh, a property in Newfoundland and said, well, maybe they want to move. Linda, maybe maybe you're enticing them to, to <laughs> relocate. I'm reaching at straws here. All right, let's go ahead and move into our uh, machine number four, which is really just the second half of our, um, our machine number three. But we're going to do uh, the second half. We're going to get into the mobile dialer, and then we're going to get into the open house app. Thanks, Mike, for posting that information there. So here's the great thing about the mobile app is it allows you to create call lists and then it's going to prompt you to make notes and schedule follow-ups, that kind of thing. And the benefit of using the app versus just using your cell phone is you're going to be able to seamlessly update any notes, um, any changes that need to happen with your contacts. So again, this is going to be like a one-stop shopping event for you. It's going to be a great way for you to save time and stay on top of your activity. Now, as I mentioned, no doubt, as we're going to go along and I show you something, you're going to say, oh, can I? Hang tight because I'm hopefully going to answer all of your questions as we get into it. Now, you don't have to create a list in order to make a call. You can just reach out to a, any contact and call them directly using the CRM. So let me show you that first. All we have to do is go uh, into the contact. Uh, if we look here, we're going to call Miranda. Uh, we're just going to click into the contact. You see the big red circle at the bottom. If we tap into that, that shows us what we can do from here. And of course, at the top of that list is click on call. And when we click on call, it takes you into your cell phone dialer. Now, it's not dialing that phone. You've got to click that green button. So you always have that little bit of a fail safe before the call is actually connected. So the mobile dial is going to take you right to the edge and you're going to have to click on that button. Now, the great thing is after you complete that call, you get this screen. So now you can answer, were they home? Were they not home? Is this a bad number? So if they were not home, then you can decide what are you going to do now? Did you leave them a voicemail? Do you want to create a note to save yourself? Maybe you want to schedule a call to call them at another time. All you have to do is tap right where it says schedule a call and this little dialogue box is going to open up. There you can decide what date you want to send the reminder call and what time you want to send the reminder call. Sorry, the, the, the call back. The reason I keep saying reminder is because these calls are going to appear in your daily reminder email. So that's why that's going to show up. Now, if your call button isn't lit up, either you don't have, uh, they've, they've unsubscribed or you don't have a good number for them. So, and then once you've completed the tasks for this call and you say finish call, it takes it into their profile. And there you can see that we left a voicemail and we've given ourselves a task to call them back again. So it's all seamless in that one thing. You don't have to look for a piece of paper to write things down and remember uh, how you handled this call. So now I want to move into the dialer. But before you, before I do that, I just want to mention you know, our uh, RLP sphere is a complex platform. And some of the things I'm going to show you, we haven't learned yet, but I didn't want to leave them out. So I want to show you, and then you can, um, uh, I'll remind you that we're going to get deeper into these subjects as we go along, okay? So let's start with our dialer. Now, when we click on the dialer button, it gives us some preset lists. It shows us if we have any overdue calls, so anything that we didn't 
a call from our previous daily reminder list. We've got today's call to look at. Uh, it shows if we have any new leads that we have to reach out to, um, activity stream, and things like that. So the other thing is it'll only show you people here that you have a phone number to call them. So let's look at what happens if we click at today's calls. We should probably look at the overdue calls, but let's look at today's calls. So we click on today's calls and it shows us who it is that we have to call. We see our list, we know who they are. All we need to do is to click on dial now. It gives us a countdown and we can either dial now, pause, skip, but it takes us right into that dialer as before, and we have to click on that green button. So once we've made the call, what happens afterwards? We get this contacted screen again. And now we've got some decisions to make. Did we contact them? Were they not home? Is this a bad number? If we contacted them, then here are some choices we can make. Do we want to add a note about the call, schedule it, et cetera? If this was a bad number, we can handle the, the details of that right now. We can say this number was no good. We can add a new note. We can change their status from sphere to archived. We can create a task that says, hey, we need to investigate this person. Um, we can send an email. So a lot of things that we can do right here, we don't have to send off an email that says, hey, can you look into this? We can do that right here on our own. Now, one of the things that we talk about with this platform is there is some uh, artificial intelligence built into it and some automation built into it. So that's what I want to start to show you. I want to start to show you how some of that AI and that automation uh, works. So I like to call this pre-gaming. Now, we can do a little bit of pre-gaming before our post-call, if that makes any sense. So what you're going to be able to do is make some decisions beforehand. So we're going to dial a hashtag here. And we're going to go on the theory that we're planning an event and we're going to be calling our people um, relating to that event. So we want to look at dial a hashtag. So we click on that dial a hashtag and it shows us our hashtag list. Now from here, we can either type in who we want or we can just tap if we see it there on the list. So I tapped on my A client and it brings me up and it shows me who they are. Now I'm gonna click on the gear up top and this is going to let me do a little bit of pre-gaming. So I showed you before that five second countdown. So here you can decide you don't want a countdown, you want it to go manually, uh, you want to just have it immediately go to the dialer or you want one second, three seconds, five seconds. So you can go either way with that. So this is where we're going to start with that automation. So we've got our call countdown figured out. Now let's look at the next piece. Let's look at our post call notes. Now this is cool because if you're calling a group of people all for the same subject, you don't want to be writing notes over and over again or cutting and pasting. Here you can pre-write the note and then just decide which ones you want to have included in your post game activity. So you can choose them and not choose them. If you click on create a new note. So let's say we want to create a new note that says, uh, yeah, they want tickets or they don't want tickets. Uh, here, I'd simply, I, I clicked save when I shouldn't have clicked save. But we can type a note or we can use existing notes that we have. So really simple, when we're done with the call, you're going to see it's going to give you those two options of those notes that you've created. You always want to make sure you click save to, to make sure that things are saved and we don't have to do it over and over again. But creating those post call notes, there's always the option to write a completely different note. But these are ones that are going to be there for us if we know 
these are potentially the notes I'm going to have at the result of the end of my list. We can do the same thing with post-call tasks. If we know I'm either going to send tickets, um, I can just give myself that task to send those tickets, or I can create an additional task. So here we've got, they've accepted us, want some uh, additional tickets. But also here, what if we uh, know that some people are gonna be like, yeah, send the tickets to a different address than my house. So here we're gonna make ourselves a task that says send tickets to and potentially the business address. So this, yeah, it can be used for any kind of, uh, if you wanna add a note to a contact, yes. Um, yeah, it, there's in there, I'll show you when we get through there. So here we've got our two different note possibilities. So now we've got our number of seconds, we've got our post-call notes, and these are not going to automatically send. These are, you're going to click them. And then uh, tasks that are potential tasks for us. Either they accepted the notes or they want the ticket sent to a separate address. So these are potential. And now we're gonna to come to that point where I say, I haven't taught you this yet. You can write your own templates. Now we talk about templates in um, week eight. But if you had written a, a template for a text message or an email, you would be able to select that here. And just as simply, you would tap on the default text message that's going to show you any of the text message templates that we have. I've written one and I know they're mine because they have my initials at the beginning of them. You can also select from any of the RLP templates that are there. So we're gonna send ticket follow-up text, and it gives us a preview of what that text is. And so now we've got our countdown, our potential post-call notes, our potential post-call tasks. We've got a potential text message that we're going to send them in the end. And then we might as well wrap it up with our potential email uh, template. Now these are templates, so you would have to do these beforehand, but then you could just apply them. And I'm using the VIP event at this moment in time, but you could use any um, template that you wrote up that you knew that you were, you were constantly saying at the end of a call, you would send a follow-up text message, then you could do that. The hashtag a client is just a hashtag that I created. So when you're creating a hashtag, this is a potentially a hashtag that you would create for yourself. So that's what that is. Where I am in, I tapped, I went into the dialer and I tapped on dial a hashtag and this was the hashtag that I selected. Okay. We've got our pregame set up. Let's start dialing. What happens when we click on dial now is it takes us to the first person on the list. It gives us that five second countdown we asked for. We've got some options on the bottom we can choose from. It's going to make the call. You have to press that green button. And then at the end of the call, it brings us to this screen. When the person is contacted, here's all of our choices. We can pick a task, we can pick a, a note, we can send that email, we can send that text message. I know these are probably slightly different than the ones I showed you, it was just because I recorded them at a different time. Okay, so there's a great question there, Linda. Because this opens up your cell phone, it shows your number. There is an option for you to text using the smart number, but this opens up your cell phone dialer so it reflects your number, okay? All right, that was kind of a fast run, wasn't it? Let's just see how awesome was this dialer. It's going to let you create a list in the morning and you can just take all day to dial it. You can click pause, or you can come away from that call. 
Remember, the dialer works as part of your CRM. So you don't have to flip back and forth into your CRM to take those notes. You can pre-game it and say, these are all the notes I want to have. These are tasks I want to create for myself. These are emails I want to send. You can do all of that before you even start your list. So there's no more until I get back to the office scratching for a pen. I have to remember, this is a one-stop shopping gig, right? We don't need to send an email to our assistant saying, can you do this, that, and the next thing? Uh, we can take care of those little things and let them focus on the bigger things, okay? So, um, do the text and email you go out automatically after you call? No, you don't have to select send. If you, at the end of the call, you can, at this point in time, here, you would click those buttons that you want to do it. And when you click on finish the call, then it would send out those emails. You would send all of that out there. So when you click finish the call, those notes get updated to the CRM and those emails and text messages get sent right away. All right, you guys are firing some great questions today. We've only got a few minutes left. I do want to get into the open house before we do that. So when you get into the open house app, I know you can't use it right now, but I want to show it to you because I think it's a pretty cool tool. So let's get in it. So you open up the open house app and you sign in with your RLP network as you always do. And that brings you here to this screen and you can see all of your previous open houses or you can start a new one. So the thing that's great about this is it's going to automatically sync. Now you can either search by address or by MLS number, but it does have to actually be a listing for you to be able to generate an open house for it. But first of all, what we're going to do is, is this the listing that we want? We confirm that it is or it isn't. And now we're going to go about arranging. What questions do we want to ask visitors to our open house app. You can get it through the Google Play Store or through the, uh, the Apple Store. So name, address, phone number. You can ask for their phone number or you can mandate their phone number. That's up to you to decide what you wanna do here. Are you currently working with a real estate agent? Probably a pretty good question to ask, especially if we wanna make sure we're not poaching anybody. And then where did you hear about it? Those are the questions we want to ask them. Now we need to look at what information are we going to give them. We don't have to take the first picture. We can scroll through all of the pictures for the listing and decide which one we want to use. This is just the background of our sign-in sheet. Now you're going to want to probably give them the listing sheet. You're going to probably want to, sorry, listing price. You're going to give them baths and beds. And then what is the square footage? Now, square footage, you only want to pick this if the square footage is part of the listing. And then we click next. The system attaches a, a hashtag, and I'll show you what that looks like, but you can also attach your own. So if you're doing a bunch of open houses in February, then you can go in and say, uh, you know, Innisfil, February 2021. This little menu is getting in my way here, but you can finish. Uh, typing in a sale 2021 and you can add that hashtag and then we want to click launch and preview you create a pin number I always keep it simple you know because I don't want to remember too much and then click on launch here it is we're launched we're ready to go and you see up here where it says the square feet if the square footage is not included as part of the listing, that would say zero square feet. So that's why I say be careful uh, when you pick it because eh, it may look not so professional. All right, so we've got this ready to go. What happens when a visitor comes and signs in? Let me show you. So a visitor comes, now either you can type their name in or they can type their name in, but you really need to let them click the submit button because with the submit button, they are agreeing to our terms and they are agreeing to be contacted. So we're putting in first name, last name, email address. Now I know some of you are like, yeah, they're just gonna give you bogus information. 
or maybe you don't even do open houses. That's all fine. I just want to show you because I think that there are still some people who do get leads through the open house process. Are they working with a real estate agent? Yes or no. And who are they working with? This person is working with Billy Joe. And then where did they hear about this open house? This is going to show up um, as the refer. So online drive by word of mouth. So this kind of gives you an idea uh, if, if your advertising is working. And then they're going to click on submit. And by clicking on submit, they're giving us permission to contact them. So then it says, thank you very much. And it takes you back to the sign-in screen. So I want to show you, as soon as they click on submit, what happens is it, they go into your CRM immediately. And you'll see here our Susie Sunshine. She comes in as a prospect because we, we don't know anything about her. We've got her as a prospect. And she goes in with a, as a buyer because she's attended an open house. But look at all of the activity that's happened here. She's assigned to the agent that ran the open house. What address was she looking at? Um, what are the hashtags? So you see there's the automatic, oh, sorry, that's the, uh, that we, there, she's working with an agent and the, the referrer is a drive-by. This is the hashtag that the system assigns, open house, MLS number, and date. And then we have also the hashtag that we added on there because we can in this fill February 21. You can delete either one of these as if they're not suitable. Now, here's another piece of automation. If you have the campaign open house turned on, it automatically starts that campaign. Now, we're going to get into campaigns on uh, week seven, and you'll know more about that. So park that little bit of information in the back of your brain. When we click on profile, we can see all of this information. If we decide we want to get rid of a hashtag, we can do that here. But here I want to show you this Castle Consent Express. And some people go, well, how do we have that? Because they're working with an agent. And so I want to just reiterate here, the reason that we have that permission is because right here, it says they're giving us express written consent to contact them. Uh, no, you can't change any of those details, Vivian. They're just, they're, they're in there. Um, and so what happens now, once we've got that thing, we've had people come through, how do we close out this open house? Uh, well, they're signing it when they come into your open house. So, and they would be either be using an iPad, whatever device you're using. If you're using a laptop, that's why I say you can either have them fill it out or you can fill it out, but they need to understand when the submit button is pressed, uh, what they're agreeing to. So typically when people come into an open house, you have a signing in uh, area for them. So the open house has been completed. How do we get out of this? We click on exit, we put in our PIN number, and then it stores the data there for us. If we decide we wanna relaunch it or look at it, we just tap into that open house. It shows us the history of the one that we had, what guests did we have, did we make any notes with them? And if we wanna relaunch, we hit the relaunch button and it shows us all of the button again. Okay, so uh, this is a mobile app, so you wouldn't get it onto a desktop or a laptop. My bad when I said that. It is a mobile app, so you can do it on an iPad or you can do it on a cell phone. Okay, so I know that was a lot about the Open House app. It's really quite simple. So if you go in and you play with it, then you're going to be able to um, uh, play with it. So Linda, you're running the open house. So it's up to you what you're going to let them do. But if you want their info for security, then you can maybe have, uh, you know, um, a written process for them. Um, and then I would also remind them they can unsubscribe at any time. Right. All right. 
So that was a fast run again. We're right at the end of our time. I do want to cover, uh, we, we did a lot. We learned how to make calls two different ways using the contact and the dialer, and we created lists. We learned how to pregame our post game, so to speak, and how to automate our calls. And then we did it through the um, open house app. I know it's a lot. I know we've got a lot going on here, but the goal here is to teach you how to use these different machines to get the best possible use of our platform. When you take the time to learn the layers, you can start to see how impactful the platform can be. So hopefully you can start to see where this is going to help you eliminate time and be more efficient with keeping your database up to date, as well as managing your task list. I know I've said it before, um, but I'm a fan of repeating myself here. There's no more waiting until you get back to the office. Everything can be done as you go along. We know change is hard, and we know learning a new way of doing things is also hard. But once you do, the benefits are worth it. So the purpose of this training circuit, my job is to teach you how to use the machine so you can build your knowledge strength. Your job is to practice the machine to develop the muscle memory of how that works. So hopefully you've reserved some time to learn the machine and become good at it. And to that end, I'm here to help. Here's some homework for you. I want you to call your list of daily callers on your reminder email. I want you to set up some pregame. And I want you to... Uh, call a list of hashtag leads. Practice the app. And the more you practice, the more things become comfortable for you, right? In preparation from next week, for next week rather, preview your website and have an idea of what it looks like and what you want to change. If you're not sure how to do that, from your desktop you sign into your desktop up in the upper corner where your username is, second line down, click on that. That takes you to your website. Sorry, folks, I'm two minutes over my talking. I'm going to see you next week where we do website part one. Thank you very much. Have yourself a great day, and I will see you next week. Awesome sauce. You'll all get the follow-up email today, um, and I'll include some tips in there for, um, uh, for the dialer. Just uh, some extra. Some people like to read, so I will give you those tips. So look for that email towards the end of the day. If you're not getting those emails, feel free to shoot me an email, lwhittle at royallepage.ca, and I will respond to the best of my ability. Thanks, everybody. Have a swell day.